<laughs> Here we go. What a guess we've got today. We're going to name this How to Be a Professional Footballer by Andy <laughs> McClung. <laughs> right, are you sure you can remember all this? Uh? Oh, you need to fall well enough for myself. So. <laughs> right, mate, we had your wee mate on um, Charlie Muller. You're fair to say, Mary, I can't really remember where it is. You never, you never... <laughs> I'm not falling into that trap, by the way. You get absolutely caned after that, didn't you? Mate, I think he works for the tourist board at Calcio. No, no. And he was, he, he was trying to sell me things and anything as well, wasn't he? He was like, use car salesman. <laughs> uh, was it you that said that the only thing he was missing was the sports socks? Aye, aye, three for a pound, wasn't it? That's what it was. <laughs> but you were brought up in Castle Milk yep. alongside Charlie, mate. Um, what was it like back then? Who was the better player that you used to? Well, I was a couple of years older than Charlie. Char Listen, Charlie's an unbelievable talent. He's a better player than me. He went on had a better career than me. But at that time, I was a couple of years older than him. And we went to different schools. Um, he went to a, I went to a Catholic school and he went to the other side. Yeah. So um, we, we played a cup final. I think I was in primary seven. The Charlie was in primary four. But it was like a Celtic Rangers game in party in Castle, you know. Mm -hmm. there, was, there must have been about 10,000 at the game. It was it, it was it was unbelievable, uh, and we we won that one too. No, uh, Charlie missed a penalty, my brother saved it for him. Um, so I, I remind him of that now and again. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're we're really good pals. We're tight. We're, I speak to Charlie all the time. And, uh, were you probably grown up? No, not really. No, really, no. Because as I say, I was a couple of year older than Charlie, so um, and he stayed. Now we, uh, uh, well, it wasn't far from me, but. Uh, he didn't stay running about the same, but I did. Now, were you just street fit by the time? Uh... Aye, that's, what we, that's all we done. Uh, there was a school right across from me, and me and my brother about there every day after school. And um, they go in and around about coaching and all this coaching, coaching. We just practised, it wasn't the mix coaching up, we practised. Um, and me and my brother would just go out and just play football all the time. That's all we had. Mm. Didn't have much else uh, growing up. Um, so football was a, a big part of my life. Uh, I was five or six. I mean, I think I played in the school team. I was about primary three, and um, I, I just I, I love football. You know, people going, um, you didn't, you didn't have a good attitude. You must have had a good attitude to be to become a professional football player. You know, mm -hmm. because you've put in all that all that hard work. You don't just that doesn't happen by accident. You know, so um, I think me and Charlie got a hard time, but we'd love the dream, mate. Aye, and we'd. I mean, Charlie, the, the two years are. We'd great good ability, you know. Yeah. We were we were ball players, weren't we? You know, we could play the game. Um, although we, we like to wee laugh and a joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're on here, mate. That's why you're on here. So how did you get picked up for Dundee United? Did he scouts down here? Aye, uh, Graham Livingston uh, picked us up. Um, they did loads of boys for, for down here. We used to train at used to train at uh, Helen Vale on a Thursday night, uh, and I went in there. I trained with a couple of teams. I trained with Hearts. Um, I was in at Rangers as well. Um, my dad was a massive Rangers fan, and Rangers actually wanted to sign me. It was just when Sunnis had took her, right. um, and they were they were kind of changing their their policy. Um, but I I went to St Dominic's and St Margaret Mary's in Castle, uh, so that wasn't even a good idea yeah. uh, signing with Rangers. And I was quick at that age, but I wasn't that fucking quick. I had to I had to I had to run five hundred every day after school. So um, so I signed with Dundee United. Uh -huh. And how did you find it moving through to Dundee? And well, Diggs was it? I was in Diggs, but before that, I mean, we used to train every Thursday night at Helen Vale, and, and we Jim used to come down every Thursday and watch his forms training. The first team manager would come down? Every Thursday. Uh, every Thursday he would come down, and he knew everybody's name. I mean, I remember, you'd probably get to jail for it now, but we Jim, I remember one day in training, I get the ball away or something, and he was shouting, hey, McClellan, you're slack. <laughs> and I'm 13. <laughs> and I'm the first team manager, you know, I'd watched him. I'd watched him beat Barcelona and all that, so you're annoyed this guy, you know. Hey, you, hey, don't get a bobby and I'm like that. So I went home and I'm, I'm saying to my dad, I'm saying, Jim McLean, cool. <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? How? And I says, well, I get the bobby and he's like, did you know your name? And I says, I. He's like, good. And he's like, that's all right. Yeah. So nowadays, you'd, 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 you'd be people who want to get arrest him and all that, but I was just delighted that he knew my name and knew who I was, you know, because I th that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a football player. That was the guy I was trying to impress, you know. Yeah. So the fact that he used to come down there and, um, I mean, every, he'd be down there every Thursday watching his training and knew everybody's name, knew things about you. It was, Oh, yeah. phenomenal. How good is that? So 16 was it you moved through to Dundee? 16, aye. Um, and at the digs, that must have been some digs, stories for yeah, it, was, it was wild, because it was just, they called us a new breed. There was there was a squad, there was me, Big Dunk, Ferguson, John O'Neill, Paddy Conley. Uh, there was a squad, and it was it was carnage. I mean, not so much in the digs, but see, look, at training, after training, because he didn't want to get back to the digs. As soon as training was finished, it was, 
You used to just play mad games, you know. You'd just, old soaks rolled up and fire soaks at each other. And we used to get in the boot room and have, uh, we'd all just pile in the boot room, turn the lights off and we'd all just punch fuck at each other. <laughs> it was just, it was just, it, it was wild, but it was great times. I mean, there was, we were always getting into trouble. I mean, it was daft things, but it wasn't, we weren't, I was never bad. I was stupid and, yeah. and done daft things and, and things like that, wasn't he? I was never nasty or, or anything like that, but there was one time me and, I think it was me, Big Duncan, John and Neil or something with, I don't know what we'd done, caught pack models or something. We Jim was always, he was always, it was all about standards, you know, keeping everything. And um, so we were in and he had this paint in the gym. He used to do, fucking, he used to have you cleaning the terrace and, and, and any any work that was needing, he used to have to wash his motor and all that kind of stuff. And we were in, he had his cleaning, uh, he had his wash, uh, painting the, the gym. It was an old gym at Tanadice and he used to go down the stair and it was, it was bogging. Uh, but the boys would get in there and you'd play heady tennis. Mm -hmm. and, um, just volleyball, and, you know what it's like, you'd be flying medicine boys at each other's head and all that when people were turning their back and things like that, so we had to paint it this day. Um, all the boys are away to train, so we were painting it, so I can't remember what, what one it was, but one of us wrote, we've wrote wee gym as a <laughs> and big, <laughs> full length right across the wall, because um, we thought they were all away to training. <laughs> So we luggies came in and had a look and fucking had a laugh and then shut the door and the next minute he's come down with wee Jim. So we were just fucking looking at wee Jim, fair play, and we had a, had a wee look and then I think he had a wee smile and then he went back and he's like, get that fucking painted there. Uh -huh. But that's what we're going to do anyway, we're only going to leave it up there, you know. And we're like, we it and then we're thinking, right, once, once he can, before they came back for training, we'll, we'll cover it up, but we never got that chance, but... Um, no, drinky, I, drinky, you liked it, you were characters so Jim McLean? I. Um, I mean, I remember when I went to sign. I, I signed before a, a semi-final of the Youth Cup. I was under 16 at the time, and under Youth Cup at that time was under 18. But the Youth Cup then was, they used to call it the Wages Cup, because the Youth Cup, the Youth Games at Dundee United were treated the same way as a first-team game. You know, we Jim would be there, Paul Stott, Oracle, everybody was there. Um, and I went in to sign, me and my dad, um, and he told me, he'd phoned my school, um, <laughs> He'd phoned up my school and I'd never, I hadn't been to school the last six months, I'm going to be honest, I'd just, I'd chucked it. Um, and he told me how many times I'd been off and this and that, and I've got a report for this teacher and that teacher, and I'm thinking, oh, for fuck's sake. So he had my kid marked right away, he says, listen, I'm expecting trouble off you. Um, and I'm glad to see I didn't need to fucking disappoint him. <laughs> um, but no, that, that was the way he was, you know, and then I went out and played that game and we beat St. Mun 3-1 and, um, and the Youth Cup, as I say, the Youth Cup was, was just as intense here as, yeah. as a first team game. I mean, I've seen boys crumble because we Jim would come in and it didn't matter if you were 15 or 16, you were getting it the same as, as you were as a, a first team player, you know. Do you think that helped you? Well, it prepared you. Because mm -hmm. I, I was the environment you were going into. Mm -hmm. You know, you were. If, I, I seen boys that couldn't handle it, I seen boys that crumbled. Good Bo players as well. Great that players. Uh -huh. Great players that just, I can't handle that. Mm -hmm. I didn't, it didn't bother me. I used to fucking piss myself. I could I'd see him shouting at other boys and I'd be trying to make face behind their back and all that. Just, because I'd, listen, somebody shouting and bawling at my face, wasn't he going to? You know, that, that was, it was a man's game you were going into. You know, if you can't, if you can't handle somebody shouting at you, you're not going to handle 10, 15,000 fans booing you or, or whatever, man. She, and that's, it, it prepared you, it grounded you. Um, and you knew, that's what you, that's, that was the environment you were going into. So, so can, you, can you remember making your debut? Aye, I made my debut at St Johnson, um, at Dermot Park. I come on, I think I come on for about 12 minutes. Um, did, and did he tell you a couple of days beforehand you were going to make your no, debut? No, no, I'd made my, I'd, I'd, I'd actually played in the first team in a, a pre-season game. We played Rangers, it was Morris Malpass testimonial, um, and Walter Smith, because of the links with Indian United, he'd done more, more a favour and brought up a, Rangers had signed everybody. Uh, it was one of the close scenes, I think they'd signed the go uh, Andy Gorham and all that had signed, or was it Chris? I can't remember, but it was it was all top signings mm -hmm. and there was about 14,000, 15,000 there. And it was in the telly, the, the day of the game. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I knew it was in the squad, but it was in the telly, McCl McClarn, he, he played the night. Um, so I'd phoned my man and all that and Dad came up um, and I got on for 20 minutes. And, um, but then it was a couple of months later. I made my debut at uh, McDermott, come on for about 12 minutes and, and that was brilliant. Aye, that's, cause that's, if, if he had been that size, that was, that was what I was aiming for. Mm -hmm. You know, so to, to get that and um, 
And that was the start for me, that was, that was me. Were you the way. type of boy that would get nervous or was it just desperate to get on? No, listen, as I say, that's what, that's what I'd worked for, I'd been four or five years old for, you know what I mean? As a wee boy, I was, that's what I'd done, I'd be out there and this is me scoring against Rangers and this is me scoring against Celtic and I used to watch it early. I mean, I remember Kenny Douglas scored a goal against Belgium and he, he go out and he turned out and he, and he, he cut inside and, and me and my brother went out for about an hour and a half and he'd th throw it in at me and I'd do it and then, and then a couple of years later, actually, that actual thing happened to me in a park and I'd done it. You know, so that, I'd been preparing myself for been five, six, seven year old for the, for the minutes, you know what I mean? Yeah. For, to get to, to get to where I was. You spoke about Big Duncan Ferguson. Yeah. Did you know he was going to be a top, top player? No. No? No, no see, at 16, 17, he was a big lanky guy and he was... But he did. Mm -hmm. See, to be fair, he did. He, I remember 16, 17 and... Um, See, you're getting a youth team in there, up there. It was a fucking hard job. It's, it's sort of there was levels, there was a youth team and then there was a reserve team and then there was a the first team. And we had 20 good boys at Dundee United. Mm -hmm. they, they, I mean, when I was there, we won the Youth Cup two years in the trot and we got beaten in the final one year. The first year I was up, under 16, we got beaten in the final. Stevie Fulton scored against us, Celtic beat us 1-0. And then the next two years we won it. Um, I get man in a match in both the finals. But that was a... Uh, but Big Duncan was... Um, no, he was a big, a big confident boy. But he was, he was a big skinny thing and he was growing into his cell and he'd, But he was a fucking, he was an absolute beast even then. He used to be into like kickboxing and stuff. So he was just walking across the dressing room and he'd just <laughs> try and kick you in the face. But his feet, feet would stop there, and, yeah. you know, and oh, fuck, I ain't no bother big um, But he'd, he'd every confidence in his cell and he was a, he was a great big guy. Was he? There was a, everybody, we were all like a wee family. See, because we were all away from him. Mm -hmm. So, Somebody was in the first team or that. I said, boys, we're, all, we were always skint. Because we gym was always fine in you. You were yeah. getting fined for ridiculous things. and You were always skint. So we all looked after each other. It was like a wee... It, that's the best way I could... We were all like brothers, you know, and they called us a new breed. And I honestly think that was what seen we jam off because they just fucking couldn't handle us because we weren't... Weren't we scared of them? We weren't... No, we weren't... Listen, I, I, I was annoying him, you know, and I, I, and I respected him. But I wasn't scared of him, you know, he would shout and ball at me and I'd, I'd answer back and he, he used to point into your face and, and I grabbed his finger one day. <laughs> uh, and he'd, hey, you've always got something to say and I'm like, listen, she, I said, shout at me all you want, I said, but don't point it at my face. So I think, and, and Big Dunk had him on toast because <laughs> Big Dunk, yeah, I think he was terrified. He was terrified for Big Dunk's dad. Right. Because I think he'd said something to Big Dunk one day and Big Dunk had went and told his dad and his dad came up and, it was outside Tanadice night, Big Dunk Star was going to bat him. Uh, and I think we jam after that. But there, oh, was, they were the days, there was a great one as well. We'd, we we had a team meeting on a Monday. So he was fucking ripping into everybody. And we Paddy Conley came in about five minutes late. So it fucking took the pressure off everybody. Because he's come in late. So he's fucking yeah. me Paddy. And about five minutes later, Big Dunk walked in. He's fucking strolled in, chewing chewing him. Um, and he started on him. But everybody else was fucking like brilliant. Because it, it, took, it took the dairy off us, you know what I mean? But he had a joke with him. He says, oh, you just turn up when you want. And Big Dunk, fucking, by that point, Big Dunk knew he was going to Rangers, so he was just fucking... No bother. Yeah, he was, he was tossing it off a bit. And, um, and he just, um, he says something, Big Dunk went, but you talking about my family? You talking about my father? <laughs> and we jumped in, no, hey, no, no, no. And, and by that point, I think that was, that was when he kind of thought, he's fucking losing this. He's, he's kind of losing the dress. Because he, he built it on fear and, and, and football wise, we Jim was brilliant, but the other side of him was, it wasn't nice, you know. I mean, I've spoke to people on football wise, he was better than Sir Alex. I think, yeah. Uh, like, listen, I've, I've spoke to people that, that worked with Bay for him and, and, and I'll tell you that, but Fergie was, was Sir Alex was, was better at the, the man management stuff, mm -hmm. whereas we Jim treated everybody the same. Didn't matter who you were, you, you know, the, the, some boys, you know what it's like, Simon, some boys need a wee cuddle and a wee. No, everybody needs shouted and balled at, you know, and, and, and no, everybody could handle that. I could, I didn't. Well, I'm honest, I just fucking hang me, but I'm just... So were you happy to see Jim McLean leave? In a way, I, I well, I, I can't really remember. I'm going to be honest, I don't really know. Um, but I'd watched him. I grew up with Indy United and watching... I mean, I was up... I was an S form and we used to go up and watch him play Barcelona. He fucking beat Barcelona home and away, you know what I mean? And, the guy was, football wise, he was a genius, but the other side, he, 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 wasn't, a nice, he wasn't a nice man, you know. Uh, but I learned, I learned so much. I mean, 
it's even at training. We'd all, you'd maybe got to training early and start, and then you'd actually see his motor coming up, and you'd actually you'd see training going up 5%, 5%, 10%. You'd hear, oh, there's, there's Ayatollah coming, and you'd just see everybody. Just Who's Ayatollah? That's Ayatollah? what they call him, Ayatollah. That was one of his nicknames, mm -hmm. I fucking like a lang with many, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there's wee Jim coming. And you'd, see, you'd see his motor coming out of the cash, you'd see his motor coming out of the hill, and you'd... You'd you could physically see everybody just lifting it, you know. Uh -huh. You were part of the United team that won the Scottish Cup. Yeah. Did you believe you could do it before the game? Aye, I did. I was twenty year old, so I thought, aye, this is going to be no bother. Um, and by the way, see, see on that, that was a Rangers were going for back to back trebles. I know they're about talking about uh, back to back trebles, and th that was a proper Rangers team. We, be, mm -hmm. you know, they. I think the year before they they, they just lost out and get into the Champions League final. And, um, the year before, they'd obviously done the treble and they'd, they'd won the first two trophies of that year. And, but it was just, Ivan Golak was the manager then. And he was a bit nuts to him. He was fucking bonkers. It was, <laughs> it, it was good for that because I spoke to the older players about... Because the United had lost seven cup finals before that. Yeah. And there was all this talk of hoodoos and all that shit. And, uh, and, uh, and it was down to wee Jim because he was that intense. You know, whereas Ivan... See the Friday before it, we stayed up in East Bread <clears throat> And Hamilton Races was on. He's like, go to the racing if you want, boys. And then at night, he's like, have a pint of beer. And I'm like, is this fucking guy for real, man? So, he's like, you can have a pint. Everybody have a pint. And I'm like, I'm not having a pint. Did a few boys have a pint, eh? I think maybe one or two of them, but I was like, I'm like, I'm not having a pint. Boys like, you know, having one? I'm like, no, I'll end up in a nightclub and fucking musical pride or something. I'll end up buying a pint of If I have one, I know what I was like even at that age. If I had one, I wanted to have 20, you know what I mean? So I'm like, no, I'm not having a pint. That's fucking mad, you know what I mean? So, but it helped to relax the boys. And and we went out. Honestly, before the game, I thought, we're going to win this. That's just fucking. I'd, we'd no right to, I'd no right to think like that because yeah. Rangers had won the last five trophies. But it's just you were that relaxed and um, you were just that relaxed. And I remember, I remember before the game, Mal Pass coming up with me and saying, listen, Andy, I mean, I'm 20 and he's saying, listen, take everything in. He's like, Cause you don't know when you'll be back here. I'm like, I know more. I'm like, myself, fuck off. I'll be, I'll be playing these every year. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, just I never played another one after it. <laughs> but when you're 20 year old, you've got that innocence about you, and you just go out and play. And I was nervous, but as I say, I'd, I stayed five minutes up the road for, for Hamden, and I'd, I'd been through that moment for 10, 15 years. In your head, I had. In my head, I'd, uh -huh. I'd, I'd, I'd rehearsed that, you know? So walking out there, I wasn't, I wasn't intimidated by Rangers. I wasn't, I was like, right, bring it on, you know? Uh -huh. Uh, and we had a good team, but we had a really good team then. Um, so who were the good players? Mal Pass, Daly. Yeah, with Mal Pass, the team was big. Guido was a goalie. Mal Pass, Alec Clarence, who went to Rangers. Big Gordon Petrich, uh, who went to Rangers. Uh, big Brian Welsh, good big centre half. With Dave Bowman, um, Christian Daly, Jimmy Mack. Jimmy Mack. Um, Badger, Billy McKinley was was suspended for it. So David Hanna came in, and me, Christian, and. And, and, Big and Brewster. Big Brewster. So it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a proper team, you know. Um, and we'd need, I mean, I'd need fear. I don't know about the rest of the boys, but I just wanted to go out and, as I say, the Scottish Cup had always been a big thing to me, even as a kid. See, as a kid growing up, it used to be, Scottish Cup Day was a massive day. It's, it, it's not so big now, but you'd, Glenn Michaels Cavalcade used to go on at night, half nine in the morning, you'd watch that, there was a big build up, you know, and for me to, for me to get to play in that was, was your family in that area? Everybody was there, all my pals. All my pals, all my pals were all Celtic fans. And, well, a couple of them, a couple of Rangers fans, a couple of Celtic fans, but I'd go to my tickets. And I told them all, I'm like, I bet I was, I said, we're 70s. So, <laughs> I don't know where they came, but I was, I, I, honest to God, I told them all, I said, we, we, we battled them. Um, and we did, we, well, we didn't battle them, but it was a good game, but yeah. we won 1-0. Um, bit scrappy at times, but it, it didn't, it didn't surprise me that we, that we won it. Would that be the best memory of your career? I, I was up there, I. But as I say, I was 20, so I didn't. I generally didn't take it in. I didn't take it in because we went in after the game, and we Jim was there. First time we Jim says was, um, fucking Craig Brewster's cost this club a lot of money. It's fucking typical we Jim quote, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> Big Brewster, Big Brewster was on 19 goals. And he scored his 20th, and he was on 10 grand for scoring 20 goals. Me, Jim was ready. And uh, we were on six grand one morning. But 
that was, I think he was joking, but he probably was, wasn't he, you know, but I left Hamden that day and boys all went up the, up the, up the back up with the day in a bus and my mates were all outside and my missus was outside and <laughs> she, she, I had my bag with my strip and all that in it and I had my, my boy, my wee boy was young, he wasn't at the game um, and she's like, I need to go down the road, take my grannies to get uh, to get away and I'm out of the bag here, my medal and that here, take that down. And me and my mates jumped in the motor and went up to the pub and cash them out. Because I wanted to go up. Very I fair. wanted to go up and see the boys first before I went up. Because uh, the, the boys, I'm like, the boys, you are coming up with us. You are coming up with Dundee. We're going up, we're going to have a right good night out. Um, so boys are like, aye, aye. Um, my missus still kids me for that right enough. But, um, but I was 20 year old, you know what I mean? And um, So we went up and we went up to the pub and cast them out. And I just, because I wanted to be in, that's... And there was boys in there, are Rangers fans. And one of them came up to me, we were shogging, um, and he came up and gave me a cuddle. Yeah, you can feed me and be. And, but he, he whispered me, and he's like, ah, son, I'm proud of you. And that's, that's the kind of things about Casimo, you know. Oh, yeah. the, 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 he was a big Rangers fan, but he was still happy for me that. Um, but he, he's like, I'll never tell anybody I tell you that, you know. Yeah. Um, and then we just get a carry out for the bus up. But I remember driving up, and you're, you know what it's like, you've had a few beers. and. So you're stopping every five minutes for pushes, aren't you? Uh, so you're stopping in lay-bys and the next minute there's 20 to the United buses <laughs> goodbye and I'm stopping outside a bottle of Budweiser. So, and people, you've seen everybody doing double takes as if it's he doing. And then we got up and it was um, the, Hul the, the Hulton, that, it used to be where the, the new building is. The Swallow, just uh, like they started on no, the... No, no, the one that, where the swimming and all swimming that used that to that be. Swimming that, I don't know the tuna here. Uh, Grape was called uh -huh. And I went to walk in, and there was a bouncer standing at the door. He's like, no, this is for players and officials only. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, I played. I was a top man. I was a top man. And my pass came out. He's like, what's happening? I was like, this my pitch not let me in. <laughs> and end up, I, I, I get two, two hotel rooms, and I went up the stair, took my mates up. And I'm like, right, hey, just... Oh, I went up, man, in a big carry out since room service and everything. I was like, I just put it in the United States. We Jim would have been in the It was unbelievable. Um, I want to ask you about your second time at Dundee United as well, because I spoke to a few people that said they picked you up for your house a couple of times and you can tell the rest. What's that? Was it Robbie Winters that used to pick you up? No, Robbie used to, that was the first time, Ron. Oh, that, that first was, time, uh, was me, it, and were, me and Robbie were really tight. Um, and Robbie was, I, 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 honestly, I used to do his nothing. Every Monday morning I'd be late. I'd, I'd still be out most of the time. Yeah. So he'd maybe come to you in a party and, um, and Robbie, uh, it was the days really before mobile phones, so my, I'd, I'd be phoning the house saying, I tell him I'll be 10 minutes, but I'd maybe be Paul or something, you know what I mean? And, uh, and every Monday, but like, I'm not waiting you again, I'm not waiting, because Robbie would have to drive like a lunatic, on a mile an hour, and I would just get in the motor and just go to that chairs and just fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be raging, they'd be like, no, I'm not no, no waiting you again, I'd be like, shut up and just fall asleep. And it used to do his nothing, but... Okay, do you not pick you up once on your front door was stolen? <sighs> no, that was, that was another time, that was when, I was, I was staying in the V at the time, we'd, we'd, we'd odds in that. Uh, Came and picked us up. And Billy Dodds, eh? Uh -huh. Billy Dodds, and we and we Joe Muller came in one morning, and I'd obviously come in for a night out. Message was maybe down the road or something. And I've opened the door. I've opened, I can't remember, but I've opened the door and I must have just fell, and I was just later. And they've come in about half night and picked me up, and all the neighbours were all walking by, and I was just lying there sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> and I've just, again, I've just got up, pulled my door shut, and then just went to training. Um, <laughs> Not even going and change your anything now? No, no, Straight no. to training. I think I had a kebab in a pocket. I just took that and had a wee bite of that. That was <laughs> getting the carbs into me. Brilliant. <laughs> so, leave Dundee United. Was yep. there a few teams interested, or was it...? Aye, well, see, before that, I mean, I don't know about the Scottish Cup and all that. Celtic had tried to buy me. Um, I, I, I knew for a fact Celtic had been in for me because they tapped me up. Um, and I think I, I think at the time I was on about 150 quid a week. United, yeah. United, yeah. right? But you used to get you get appearance money and, and win bonuses and stuff. And I was on I was on peanuts. But as I say, she's a wee boy. It was never about money for me. It was about she being a, a football player. Yeah. That was that was enough for me, you know. And it, I was probably my most enemy because I never kicked out a fuss about it. She as long as I was playing. I, I used to play. If you played on a Saturday, you'd maybe get 150 appearance and. Tap your wages, and then if you win, you get six hundred quid. So, see, for me, that, that was like winning the lottery. You yeah. know what I mean? That was a, that was a lot of money to me. Um, and and Celtic, I think Celtic bid, I think they bid nearly a million pound for me. Um, 
and there was teams in English Premiership and all that coming in for me. And, um, but I remember, did the United knock back? It was nearly a million quid for Celtic. The raging when they knocked it back. I was back. only 150 quid a week. How can <laughs> I that went that. in and said to them, how, how, can I, how can you, how can I be worth, because we Jim said to me, oh, you're worth more than that. I said, I'm on fucking 150 pound a week. I said, how can you, you're taxing I'm a million and a half pound player and I'm on 150 quid a week. I'll give you more money. I said, don't want more money. I said, I want to, I want to go. Um, no, you're not going. We want more money. But it was one of the, it was any time you can eat your contracts and all that, you know. Yeah. And at, at that point, I was staying in Dundee. I'd done missus and my wife and two ends. And, um, so they had you... They had you, you know what I mean? You couldn't, what, what could you do? You know, you, you, you had your contract. Um, that was in the days when, just bef that was just before it turned, you know, it was just before Bosman. Um, and I think that was another reason why we Jim chucked it, because he it, it, it could control people, you know what I mean? And the control but, was going after that? Yeah, nah, of course it was. Because mm -hmm. um, boys were in the fiat film, but I look back now, and obviously I'm, I'm raging. See, at the time, I, I, I can remember going in and been ar arguing with him and all that, but I thought, I'll get, I'll, get, I'll get a good move, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. But, but at that point, I was drinking too much um, and I was doing other things after part of that shooting I've been doing. Um, and that was slowly, I mean, I can remember, I can remember at Dundee United, we played, we played Motherwell in the Scottish Cup, it was the quarterfinals. Um, Rita Tam McLean was the manager. And I came in on Friday morning, I was blittered. I came down, I came down the road. I used to come down the road, we used to have a pool tournament in the pub in Castle. And I used to come down because I loved that. I just, I loved being in the pub with the boys and, and the banter. And I, I wasn't, I, listen, I went in plenty of nightclubs, but I loved sitting in a pub with all the, all the, all the guys having a laugh and slagging each other and be bit of music on a game of pool. That was, see, like a Sunday day and that, that was my ideal day, you know, football. And, and that was my ideal day. But I used to come down, I used to sneak down the road on a Thursday and we'd, we'd have a pool turn. Um, and it was, I just loved the banter, I loved the part of them, I mean, it was just all guys. And, and I was just standing there, you know, I'd walk in and be like, all right, you dick, you know, you're all guys, and just put you right in your place. Um, and I came down this night and ended up drunk. And I think, I played the pool turn, right? So I, I broke off and an old guy who was steaming, who couldn't even, couldn't even see, just cleared up. <laughs> that was me. I travelled down on the half to come down for a pool <laughs> turn, and he's like, I'm sitting down, you dick. I'm not going to And then. Uh, was it John Burgo? Oh, no. <laughs> honestly, but that was. And then I'd went in on the Friday, and I was. I there was a smell of drink half me. Um, and me, Tam Paul, and he's like, ah, she, uh, he's like, ah, size of yours fine, depends on how well you play tomorrow. And I went out the next day, I scored two and set up the other two. Wow. And I can remember coming in and laughing at me, Tommy, going, I fucking, I showed you, but. I look back now and I think if I was doing that when I was coming out, when I wasn't preparing properly, what could I have been if I hadn't have, mm -hmm. uh, if I'd have, if I sat in the house and ate past and, but I wouldn't be on here with you, Sai. Yeah, so. right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so, Red, how did you find it? When I said, I can remember going down there and I was only playing and I can remember going down there and think, you know, you talk to yourself. I'm thinking, right, hey, that's a big opportunity for me. I'll go down there and I'll get half a drink and I'll stop doing what I'm doing half a part. And, and I'll get my career back in track and I'll be there six months and I'll blow this league away. And that's, what was, that's the kind of things I was saying to myself. Um, and I was doing there about three days and it was just... But my, my intention was to go down there and stop drinking. But I was trying to run away from... I thought I was running away from Glesia and, and all my pals, but I was run, trying to run away from myself because yeah, it was yeah. me was the problem. It was me it was the one that was drinking and, and doing the other stuff. And, um, so I went down there and that was my plan. But as I say, I was down there because my wife... Claire, and, and it, she was like, I'm not going down there. She's like, I was bad enough up in Dundee. She's like, I'm not going down. She's like, at least in Dundee, she, she was only on the half down the road. She's yeah. like, if I'm, she can come down and see her mom or that. So I'm doing there myself. That's probably the worst thing that could happen there. I was in a hotel, mate, honestly. It was fucking carnage. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I moved into a hotel, right? And within a week, the boy behind the bar, right? He was a boy from Dumbarton, and he was telling me, before I moved in, they used to get through two cases of Budweiser a week, right? After a week, they were, they were rolling in six cases of Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was a good thing. I'm, I was proud of that. You and you made him put a pool table on his own? No, but I'm, I'm not stupid. The, I'm, the balls all got to Redden. <laughs> so, because oh, they were picking up the tab for everything, so they're getting fucking cheeseburger and fucking 24 bottles of Budweiser, you know what I mean? They're getting a the ball for that, yeah. so. I think Tommy, right away, he's like, oh, we've got a cracker here. Um, 
But Tommy was good. He t- listen, he tried with me. He was the one guy that, that actually did. He, he called me out. He, all the players doing it, Redden had a meeting, big Barry Hunter and, and guys like that. Um, he pulled me one day in a, in a changing room um, and he said to me, listen, we're worried about you. We think you've got a drink problem. And I'm like, no, 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 no. But it was the first time anybody had ever done that and I was, I was embarrassed about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, no, no, listen, I'm just doing here myself and I'm lonely and... I'm not sure, but I, I did have a drink problem then, but I wasn't, I wasn't wanting to admit it, you know what I mean? I wasn't wanting to do that in front of, in front of the boys, but see, see, but fair to the boys, fair play to them for doing that to yeah. me, you know what I mean? Because, see, for the CSI, they, 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 they got me help, but, they, but I didn't, I wasn't ready then. I wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't what was planned out for me, it was, you know, so I just kept on my way and I, I came up and loaned to, to Livingston. Uh, Tommy sent me up the road, it was near Christmas, and I think he thought, get him up the road for Christmas, so we'll be up, back up with his family and all that, and I went up, I think it was in November or something, I saw him in Livingston, and even then, like Raymond Stewart was the manager, and I think it was like a Thursday, or a, a Wednesday, and he's saying, just get the flight up, minute to train in the morning, and you know, there's, there's flights every hour for Heathrow, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, well, I can't get a flight, because I wanted, I did, I had a flight, but I wanted to go up the road and go and go, go out, I you wanted to get right out, know what I mean? I says, I'll be on Friday morning, no, I need you in training in the morning, I'm like, I can't get a flight, he's like, what are you talking about, you can't get a flight, there's a flight every fucking half an hour for Heathrow, <laughs> um, but that was, as I say, and I went up to Livingston, and I'm going to be honest, I was there three months, and I, I can't remember, the big boy Brian McPhee used to pick me up every morning, and that was another one, he'd pick me up, get in the motor, I'd fall asleep, he'd wake me up at training, I'd go in, put my gear on, fall asleep, I'd go train, come back, get a shower, get in his motor, fall asleep, and then he'd just, he'd, he'd, he'd wake me up at the house, I think I spoke to the guy about, I think I spoke about three months to the guy in three months, he must have thought, like, was this, you know? It's just weird though, uh, brilliant mate. But uh, at Redden though, was it Alan Pardew that came in at the end? Pards came in, aye, and, and, and again, Pards was good, Pards had a wee, he had a chat with me and he says, listen, you're my type of player and um, try to have a wee go with me and try to get me, try to get me back. Um, but as I say, I was, by that point, I was, I was gone. I needed something drastic to happen in my life. And of course, I failed a drug test there and looking back at the time, I thought it was the end of the world, but I, I wouldn't be sitting here now, Simon, talking to you if, if I hadn't failed that drug test. I think I'd been, I, I genuinely think I'd be dead today. Um, yeah. um, because I was, I, I was half the scale by that point, you know. And, uh, but as I say, I wouldn't change anything, you know, because it, it's made me, made me the kind of guy I'm all the day, you know. Because if I'd have maybe get through all that and then go to the end of my football career, I'd have just went right off the rails then, you know. So yeah. it happened. I, th- I mean, I believe things happen for a reason, and, and I believe that happened for a reason. Yeah, because when you got yourself better, I think you went to kill it and you were absolutely flying again, yeah. weren't you? The English PFA were, were, were magic with me. I've been doing. In, your man, I'd take you down for a hearing, um, and your man Paulo Paulo Decano was there. He he was up for showing his ass or something um, <laughs> when he was at West Ham. So for a couple of days up here, it'd been it'd been the biggest news story in Scotland. I mean, I was in first eight when it was six o'clock news and the first the front pages of every newspaper that had failed a drug test, which I thought was about like an OTT. But um, before that, I had to go to a hearing down at Leeds, and I went down myself. Nobody knew, nobody knew I'd filmed a drug test. Nobody, nobody, no even my agent, I didn't. Before I left Reading, I, I took a drug test and I knew I was going to fail it. Mm-hmm. I knew, I knew what I'd been up to, I knew I was going to fail it. I wasn't telling anybody, I didn't, I was embarrassed, I didn't want anybody to know, so I went down to this hearing in Leeds and I'll never forget, I went down on the train. I couldn't drive at that point, I went down on the train and I had been mad about the night before. Um, and I got on the train and I'm sitting on the train, I've got a white shirt on and it's fucking soaking, so it's, Pushing through, and um, the, 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 the drinks trolley's fucking. It was as if the guy was just doing that in my seat. He's <laughs> all I could see with Budweiser and hearing it clinking. And I'm like, oh, this guy's fucking. He said, I knew myself, I'm like, if I take one of them, I'll stop by sweating and all that, I'll be all right. Mm-hmm. But also knew, see if I'd have took one, I'd have just, I'd end up sitting on the train to London or something and just fucking gone a day out. And I wouldn't have went to the hearing and, and I'd just come up the road. So I went to that hearing and, and I went in, and it was the first time ever. I went in and the boy Brendan Batson was was a boy for the PFA and he says, listen, they know when you've done it, when you've done this. And because I had a big, being a wide off the cast mall, I had a big plan set out and I was going to go in and tell lies and do this. Yeah. And, and if I'd have done that, I'd have probably got away with it. But I would have, I wouldn't, 
as I say, I don't think I'd be here today. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I get called, so they banned me, they banned me indefinitely. And then I take you down to another, another one, down at Lancaster Gate or whatever, the FA headquarters. And I went down and me, Paolo was in before me. So I'm sitting, I'm saying, wait, wait for, so there was loads of press outside, but I'm like, they're not, they're not there for me, they're not there for me. Paolo De Canio, you know yeah. what I mean? So I've come out after it and I was banned indefinitely. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't in any st fit state because see, for the January to the March, I had about 30, old, 30, 30, 40 grand, I think I had about fucking a grand left by the time the march came. Just uh, on Boosley? No, 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 stuff I had, but um, at that point I was trying to drink myself to death, I think. Um, but I went down to that hearing and he says, like, I says, listen, I need to help. I says, I ain't, I've got a drink problem. And it was the first time in my life I'd ever flung my hands up to it. And he says, right, we'll get you help. Um, and they put me in the priory. And I was in there for a month. And the first week I hated it. I thought everybody was talking about me. They were, but because it was on every newspaper, you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> so they went, um, and I was paranoid and I was fucking, I was on medication to help me to take him off the drink and, and, and uh, whatever else. And, um, and then I, I came out of there after four weeks. I felt brilliant. Four weeks after the drink, I'd been eating good grub and I'd been going out with runs and I was always fit, Simon. I was, I could always, you know, that, was, that was one of the things, because I could get in on Monday morning after I'd been out Saturday night, Sunday night, and, and, and run away from everybody, mm. and just be laughing and all that, but I've been on the drink all weekend and using... He's a bad user. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I went in and I came out of there and I thought, what am I going to do now? Because I didn't think anybody, I'm going to be honest, I didn't think anybody would touch me. I thought maybe Berwick Rangers would go and touch me when I failed the drug test, and I thought, right, I'm going to need to go to Berwick Rangers or something, just try and work my way back up. Um, but as I say, I was training and um, going and played fives with my pals, just read half things and getting the buzz by it. And I was going to AA and I, I, I had good people running about me and people that were helping me. And one of my mates, he said to me, I didn't even have a club at this point, he says, You'll play for Scotland. I'm like, fucking bonkers. He says, I've never got a club, you mad man. Aye, well, he had been on the drink. He was a recovering alcoholic, same as me, but, but he'd made confidence in me than I had myself yeah, because yeah. I'm like, ah, and um, I went and ended up, we, we luggy phoned me, we wanted me to go back to the day and night, but I didn't think that was a good idea. So Johnson got in touch with me, and then I met Bobby. Bobby Wilson came and met me in, in the town with John Viola's office, and, um, and I had a chat with him, and he says, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a three-month contract to now. He says, I'll give you X amount, and I'm like, fucking brilliant. I'm getting, because I'd, at that point, I had no money. Um, I'm like, brilliant, I'll sign. But I like Bobby, I just... It was Feaster who snapped for Cashmall and he called a spade a spade, didn't he? You know what I mean? He says, see if you drink again, he says, you're out the door. I'm like, ah, that's fine. I says, just, I, just need a, I just need an opportunity. Uh, and I went in there and it was brilliant. Um, first day back in a new dressing room, you know, it's like, I'm usually, I'm, I'm buzzing for that, you know, but I've been out of dressing room for six months. I've had all this shite in the papers and I'm thinking, how do, I, how do I take this thing at this? Because I don't want boys to be different on about me either. I want to still be the same <laughs> don't way. Be awkward, no, <laughs> I don't want boys to be tiptoeing about me, you know what I mean? Making it awkward for them. So I actually thought about getting a case of Budweiser and just walking in the dressing room. <laughs> and so that was my plan, you know what I mean? I was like, I mean, good. no, we didn't do fucking well, you know what I mean? But I knew Durante and McCoy snore up in that dressing room, so I knew as soon as I got in there, I was going to get... So I was, I was one of the first in, so you know what it's like, first day in, you're keen. And, but I'm, it wasn't like me, but it was a wee bit, I was nervous, I'm not usually, I can walk into any dressing room and I'm, no problem, you know, the day I can still do that, and I'm no, I've never been that type, um, but that day I was, mm -hmm. I was nervous getting in that day, and I was in, I fucking found my place, put my stuff up, started getting ready. We did auntie came in about five minutes later and fucking ripped me apart. Did he? It was brilliant. That's what you needed to run it, It was brilliant. It was just exactly what I needed. Oh, for fuck's sake, there he is, that silky bastard. And <laughs> it was fucking, it was, I'll never forget that, but it was, it was, it was just, because everybody laughed then. Because mm -hmm. people were asked, right, what, the, what do we do here? Do we, do we see it? Do we know? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And after that, I loved that, I loved that dressing room. I was, I was writing about it again, you know what I mean? I was... Is McCoy's and Durant's part of brilliant? I'm amazing, amazing. We Durant is one of the funniest guys. I was with him yesterday and it, it's, but any time you see him, he's just... I, I, I he love, didn't see that aside of me, because no, he had like no, but he's, 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 and it's, he's, see one on one, he's a wee kind of shy guy, but see, and I, he's, he's one of the funniest guys, but I, I, I loved it, because I could bounce off him and... 
I used to travel down with wee Craig Dargo and I used to cane him every day. And see, by the time we go to train, wee Dargo was ready to attack me and all that. <laughs> and, and I'd be like, oh, just get into him, get him. He's, he's ready to crack. And, and we just, it was just wee daft things like that, you know. And it was, it was brilliant. And I loved, as I said, three great years. Um, and it, listen, looking back now, I wish I hadn't left. I, I'd, I'd an offer of a contract, um, but they were wanting to... It was just, this is a deal, the Sky deal just fell through and they were, they were wanting to cut my wages with like 100 quid or something, you know what I mean? But I did three good years and I, I was looking for more money, you know? Mm -hmm. And hindsight's a great thing, but I wish I'd have just went, aye, listen, do you know what? Take another three year deal and, and stay there, but I didn't. After all you've been through for me, I call it to Scotland. I know. That must have been the best well, moment. Listen, it was, it was nearly a year to the day that I left the Priory. A priory is a, it's a psychiatric hospital. Mm -hmm. Looney bin. There's no many people can be at a loony bin in a year later play for a country. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I can remember I was staying in East Cobride at the time. And it was a Sunday afternoon. Me and my, my boy and, and my boy Jimmy, who was who the guy that helped me, unbelievable. And Craig Brown phoned me. And I'd been done a four, I thought it was a noise up. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, fuck off, it's Craig Brown here. <laughs> and you know what it's like, boys uh -huh. phone you up. So he snodded, does it, didn't he? Aye, uh -huh. brilliant. So I, I'd been done with a four, so I'm like, oh, fuck off, and just hung up. <laughs> um, and then he phoned back, hello, Andy, it's Craig Brown. And I'm like, oh, listen, sorry, Craig. I, I, he's like, no, it's just to call you up for the, for the polling game. Um, and that was, that was amazing. And then we went to Poland, and I mean, I know people laugh about it and sign up for the national anthem, but honestly, it was, it meant the world to me that when, to, to think where I was the year before, you know what I mean? To get that. I only got one. Big Squeeze just slaughters me. He says I get two, my first and my last in the one day, you know what I mean? <laughs> but me and Kenny Douglas have got her on three between us, that's for a lot one. But as I say, loads of, there's a lot better players. Was it at Hamden? You're... No, it was, no in, it was in Poland. Poland. Um, but you get two taps, and I gave, I gave my pal one because, as I say, he, he, was, he was a guy that told me a year before that I would play for Scotland. Uh, but listen, I got to play for Scotland once. There's a lot better players than me in it. That never get any, you know. Uh -huh. uh, you went to uh, Morton yep. with your mate Scotty McLaughlin, who I've been speaking to. There's a few stories I want to ask you about. <laughs> <laughs> What's the day with a silver thumb? Aye, that was, a, that was a good one, actually. I was in Asda one out with my missus, and I, I was always just doing daft things. So, I mean, she's we're walking about Asda, and I've just seen this big silver thumb. I'm like, oh, I'm having it. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> so I put it in a basket. She's like, what, what are you doing with that? I'm like, ah, just shut up. So I've took it through, bought it, and the next day I've, we're playing, we're playing down at Green Up. So I'm putting my suit on, so I fucking put this thing on. I don't know, do you wear thongs, son? Have a look, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, right? I drove all the way down to Green Up, and it was fucking cut me in half. I've, I've got my clubs tracky on, man. I'm like, ah, fucking. So I'm like, ah, we Scotty. Name's a team and all that. So I'm like, ah, Scotty, watch this, watch this. So fucking just put <laughs> So I've started to take my gear off. Just fucking so I've took my, my tools off for the boys. Oh, so I'm up in the I'm up in the treatment table again and the wee chairman comes in. The wee chairman's a wee church going guy. Mm. And I've got this fucking <laughs> silver thong on and do you like that one, chairman? <laughs> <laughs> but it was just I just done as I say, I was I was never malice, you no, know, I just, I just done things to get a laugh because people, Boys have been nervous of four games. I never go I get hyped and just went mental hyper, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I didn't know. I wasn't one of the guys that would sit and get in the zone, you know. I, I just I had loads of nervous energy before games, so I'd, I used to learn daft songs and I mean I used to sing Peter Andre, Mysterious Girl, and I learned the dance and all that. But it was just to give the boys a laugh, it mm -hmm. wasn't. It? But some people thought I wasn't taking the game seriously. We Jim used to always go at me, ah, you, you don't love the game. I mean, I'm 45. I still play fives every week, and you know I, I was playing amateur football 36 months ago. And I play over 35. I, I, I do love the game, but people have got different ways of showing it. You know, uh, people, not everybody sits there and fucking oh, gets in the zone, you know what I mean? I'm, just love like, the band and the hands. That was how, that was what worked for me. You know, me sitting, if I was sitting quiet, it was something wrong with me. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So I was always wanting to, and trying, trying to take the pressure off other boys. Uh -huh. What about the poor boy, John Mazzano? John Mazzano, you <laughs> Scotty loves that story. <laughs> um, Aye, it was, I look back at it now and I think, what was the day? And it, was, it wasn't a nice thing a day, but it was funny. It was, uh -huh. The wee boy, had, he'd been at Morton for about six years. He'd been told he's, he's, your contract's not getting renewed. So the last game, so he's, he's devastated. He's sitting there and I think he's in tears. Uh, we Scottish, like, oh, I've walked in, I've just kind of tapped him. 
So don't worry, Johnny boy, you can tell your grandmans you've played with Andy McClellan. <laughs> but everybody just laughed. I mean, I wasn't meaning it to be bad or, or it'd be horrible. It's just. Like the mood, was, aye, that was the way uh -huh. I, that was the way I was, you know. I I, I try to see the humour and everything. Listen, see when you've been through some of the shit I've been through. You need to laugh, mate. You need to laugh. Yeah, you know, right. if you don't laugh, you're gonna get off your head, you know what I mean? So um no, as I say, listen, I look back at my career and I played four hundred odd times in SPL and scored fifty goals and see when I was 10, 11 year old, see if you'd have offered me that, I'd have bought your honour. Mm -hmm. You know, I played for Scotland, I won the Scottish Cup. I don't you know, people say a lot of people, I mean, we did an we done a QA yesterday and they said like, underachieved, but see if you'd have offered me that at 10 year old, I'd have bought your horn off, you know, and I didn't make a lot of money out of the game and uh, but I've got memories that will that will last my lifetime. And you've had a great time, haven't you? Aye. Had a laugh. Aye, I had a, I enjoyed enjoyed it. You know, um and most of my teammates, I mean I, I had some great story, I mean the best, one of the best stories I've got is, is, is a wee boy, uh, the boy Ziggy Johnson played with at Dundee United. We signed a, a few Scandinavian boys, but Ziggy was from Iceland, I know that's no Scandinavia, but they, they were good boys, they were great boys, they loved the banter, they loved, I would take them out and get them all drunk and all that, and we'd have a laugh. And so I went into training one Monday morning, and I could tell what I'm in the corridor, oh, I'll wait until Andy comes in, because I would always, I would just get to the dressing room going and just slagging people. So Ziggy Johnson had been out one Saturday night, he'd been out and brought a ferry. Buddy posh part, that's a posh part, isn't Aye, it? Aye, well... If there is a posh part, um, <laughs> And he'd went out, and he'd get steaming drunk, and he'd, he'd left the nightclub, and there's... Walking along the front, as we was, and there's sushis, so he'd fell out a wee wall and just lay there, and the police had fun him drunk, and they took him to the police station. So they've let him, let him lie in the shelf for a couple of hours to sober's up, and, um, and they've come in to him, is there anybody you want to call to let him know you're here? He says, aye, Jim McLean. Half three in the morning. <laughs> I'm like, ah, so I'm, they, they tell me that in the, in the Monday morning, and I couldn't. I, if that's anybody in the the one person in the world, I'm, I'm like, what are you thinking? He's like, Andy, I don't know. I was very drunk. I'm like, why are you phoning? We jam had to go come down to the police station in his jammies and get him out. And see, honestly, I, see, I, I couldn't stop laughing at him yeah. for a bit. Four weeks, I just kept, every time I looked at him, man, I was just, what are you I was just then? fucking, what are you think, they phoning me, Jim, to come and get you to the police station? I mean, I think that's one of the problems with Scottish football now, isn't it? Don't see enough boys getting to jail at fucking <laughs> kebab shops or that, man. We were, qualifying, change, yeah. we were qualifying for World Cups when we were fighting outside kebab shops or pizza huts or um, taxi ranks. I used to love that. You get in a Monday morning, you get all the banter, okay, all the banter, uh, it's uh, been happening. And, and he used to, every second week, there was always some, Football player getting to jail for, for fighting or something, you know what I mean? We, we don't do that enough now. That's there you that's, go, players. Get, there are people, that's, that's, people that's getting to jail. <laughs> <laughs> right, Andy, top man. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.